What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. It is the last and final week of the fantasy football regular season, and hopefully you've been saving a little bit of your fab. Hopefully you haven't burned your waiver wire priorities because this week we have a potential league winner sitting on our waiver wires in almost every single league that you may be playing in. So without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about these waiver wire pickups. Now, as always, I got 10 players that I want to talk about on the waiver wire this week. But before we get into those 10 guys, I want to give you a list of double check players. These players are all rostered in over 50% of leagues. So there is a chance they're available on your waiver wire. Maybe they're not. Like I said, they're rostered in over half of leagues. But you got Keenan Allen, Jerry Judy, Sam Darnold, Jalen Warren, Gus Edwards, Tucker Craft, Jake Ferguson, Keon Coleman, Matthew Stafford, Romeo Dobbs, Cedric Tillman, Caleb Williams, and Adam Thielen. A lot of these players we've talked about on previous week's episodes before they pass that 50% threshold. But like I said, they're being talked about this week, so maybe they are available on your waiver wire still, and they are players that you can go pick up. But now that we have the double check players out of the way, I want to talk about the first waiver wire pickup, and this is the cream of the crop this week. It's Isaac Garendo for the San Francisco 49ers. Now, the reason why we're picking up Isaac Garendo is obviously because CMC suffered a PCL injury. It was not related to the Achilles tendonitis, so that is a good thing for Christian McCaffrey, but also... Jordan Mason suffered an ankle injury that is going to put him on IR. So now the 49ers are going to be without Christian McCaffrey and Jordan Mason for the remainder of the year. That is going to make Isaac Grendel RB1 here in San Francisco. And when you look at the upcoming schedule, you got teams like Chicago, who's currently ranked 22nd against the running back position here in week 14. Week 15, the Los Angeles Rams currently ranked 24th against the running back position. And then week 16, Miami, that's currently ranked 19th against the running back position. That is a lot of green on the schedule. Some good matchups for Isaac Grendo. And Isaac Grendo is a very, very fast very quick type of running back he is a guy who's going to get a workload he has the ability to break off some big plays and he is a potential league winner for me this is a guy i'm burning the priority on i'm burning a hundred percent of the fab that i have remaining left on him this guy can win you a fantasy football championship if things go out the right way so make sure you prioritize isaac grendo he is by far my number one player here on this week's wire now the next player that we're going to be talking about is going to be a quarterback streamer it's going to be russell wilson look russell wilson's coming off of a game against the cincinnati Bengals where he threw for 400 yards and three touchdowns currently rostered in about 41 percent of leagues so he is still widely available now ever since becoming the starter he has three top 10 finishes at the quarterback position two more that were top 24 finishes so if you play in a super flex league there is a chance that he is still valuable for you anyways i think russell wilson he has a very good matchup this week against the cleveland browns you look at this matchup on paper right now cleveland's ranked 25th against the quarterback position allowing some fantasy football points to that position group so russell wilson's a guy you can pick up and stream again this week he does get philly next week which is going to be a much tougher matchup in the first week of the fantasy football playoffs so keep that one in mind but if you're looking for a quarterback in week 14 maybe you got lamar jackson on by maybe you got cj stroud on by and you need a quarterback russell wilson is definitely your guy and i think you can plug him in and play him here immediately this week so now let's move over to the wide receiver position i want to talk about nick westbrook akine for the tennessee titans now look i've been very cautious with nick westbrook akine because the usage he's been getting has been very hard to keep up however this is a guy who keeps making it happen currently rostered in about 27 percent of leagues last week he had three receptions on eight targets for 61 yards and two receiving touchdowns he is on a touchdown streak at the moment just feels like he's always getting into the end zone and he is being used by will levis right now in this offense i look at the matchup this week for akine he does get the jacksonville jaguars they're currently ranked 30th against the wide receiver position and then he has some pretty decent matchups again through the fantasy football playoffs cincinnati indianapolis jacksonville again there in the championship week i'm not saying that i'm super comfortable throwing nick westbrook akine into my starting lineup each and every week but this is a player who keeps finding the end zone he has a good schedule and in a little bit of a weaker waiver wire outside of isaac garendo i think nick westbrook akine should be picked up and put onto your teams at least as a flex option over the next couple of weeks now we're going to go to another wide receiver this guy is going to be xavier leggett for the carolina panthers we've talked about him over the last couple of weeks i've been banging the drum for adam thielen saying that you got to pick up adam thielen you got to play adam thielen i've been doing the same thing with xavier leggett as well he is currently rostered in about 48 percent of leagues so the threshold is still below that 50 percent bryce young is just playing some good ball at the moment there's no doubt about it he does have a tough matchup this week so he gets the philadelphia eagles obviously they've been very very good against wide receivers that does worry me for a guy like adam thielen that does worry me for Leggett this week but then after that 
He gets Dallas in the first round of the playoffs, then Arizona and Tampa Bay. Those are some pretty positive matchups for the fantasy football playoffs. So you can flex Leggett. And if Bryce Young keeps playing some good football, you should probably be picking him up because I do think Leggett is the big play guy in this offense, even though Adam Thielen is the PPR monster. So maybe you're still looking for a quarterback streamer and Russell Wilson's not available. I do think you can go find Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston's currently rostered in about 21% of leagues. Jameis Winston, he's coming off of a game there on Monday Night Football where he almost threw for 500 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions. This is the Jameis Winston experience. He's going to turn the ball over. He's going to do some crazy shit. But Jameis Winston is also going to score a ton of fantasy football points. Like I said, you could probably stream him this week. The matchup is a little bit rough on paper. It's Pittsburgh. They are second against the quarterback position. But last time he played Pittsburgh just a few weeks ago, still had 200 yards and two touchdowns. One of them was a rushing touchdown on the ground. I think Jameis Winston can be streamed this week if you need him. Like I said, you have Lamar Jackson, Jaden Daniels, CJ Stroud, a bunch of these other quarterback options on by. So Jameis may be needed. I think he's going to be a guy who is high risk, high reward. Obviously, he's going to turn the football over, but he's also going to score a lot of points. So if you need a streaming option, Jameis Winston, he's widely available and probably should be picked up if you need that guy. Now, moving on to Winston's teammate, I want to talk about Elijah Moore as a pickup, currently rostered in 23% of leagues at the moment. He's coming off of a game where he had eight receptions on 14 targets for 112 yards. I think Elijah Moore, as much as we think Cedric Tillman is going to be a good player, as much as we think that Jerry Judy is going to be a good player, and those guys are good players, Elijah Moore is still going to be involved as well. Like I said, Jameis Winston, when you're throwing for 500 yards, you're throwing it 40 times a game. A bunch of these guys are going to be involved in Joku as well. This is mainly a guy that I'm very comfortable just picking up and having as a depth piece on my roster throughout the playoffs because the playoff schedule isn't the worst. You have Pittsburgh this week, but Moore is not going to see the number one corner in Joey Porter. You got Kansas City next week, and then you got Cincinnati in the fantasy football playoffs there in week 16. So it's going to be a decent schedule for Elijah Moore. The one thing worth noting is that Cedric Tillman could be potentially back in the lineup here in the next couple of weeks. So 14 targets may not be the actual floor that he gives you most weeks, but I do think this is a guy who could give you seven, eight, nine type of targets, and you could still be fine with the type of yardage that he's putting out there for you. Moving on to our next wide receiver, this is going to be Marquez Valdez Scantling for the New Orleans Saints. Look, this is going to be a boom bust play as well. Over the last four weeks, that includes a bye week, so three games played, he has four touchdowns here for the Saints. Now, he's not getting a lot of receptions, he's not getting a lot of targets. We have three targets in week 10, four targets in week 11, the bye week in week 12, and then three targets again in week 13. He's catching these long touchdowns in this offense. I don't know if that's going to be something that keeps up, but look, I said the same thing about Nick Westbrook Akine. He was catching these long touchdowns with very few targets, and somehow he keeps scoring. So MVS, he is rostered right now in about 42% of leagues. You probably can pick him up, put him on the end of the bench. And if you need a boom bust type of option, a high upside type of option in your flex spot, you can plug him in as a high risk, high reward type of play. So MVS in a weaker waiver wire week, like I said, this one isn't the greatest waiver wire week outside of Garendo. You probably can pick up and stash Marquez Valdez Scantling. Speaking of stashes, let's move on to the next stash that I have. It's going to be a running back and it's going to be Tank Big of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Currently rostered in about 48% of leagues, so he is below that 50% threshold, just barely coming off of a week where he had eight touches for 35 total yards. Now look, Tank Bigsby, he is obviously not going to be a league winner unless Travis Etienne gets shut down, unless Travis Etienne gets injured. That is not the case at the moment, but you want to have these type of high upside type of handcuffs on the back of your bench through the fantasy football playoffs anyways, just in case that happens. I'm looking at the schedule for Tank Bigsby. Tennessee this week, which is a decent run defense to play against. New York the next week las vegas the following week and then tennessee again so the playoff schedule isn't the best of schedules but it isn't the worst either it's pretty much middle of the pack i think you could have some opportunities here for tank bigsby as a high upside stash and if you have travis Etienne on the roster maybe you just use bigsby as handcuff insurance and if you don't maybe you're looking at him as a home run swing potentially in the fantasy football playoffs if anything happens to etn but he's definitely a guy that i think we should be picking up now that he's healthy and back in the lineup so let's move on to our next guy i want to talk about juan johnson at the tight end position for the new orleans saints now look Taysom Hill, he suffered a season ending injury unfortunate because Taysom Hill was a league winning type of tight end the usage that he had was insane he was going to give you a ton of fantasy football points Juwan Johnson to me he's the next man up in this offense you see he had five catches on seven targets for 36 yards in this game against the Los Angeles Rams last week now I don't think he's going to be a very high ceiling type of tight end but I do think he can get some volume here with Derek Carr he has a tough matchup this week against the New York Giants they are currently the second best team against the tight end position so a little bit of a tougher matchup 
to plug him in and play him in. But then you have Washington, Green Bay, and Las Vegas. Las Vegas in week 16, the worst defense against tight ends. So there is some potential playability throughout the fantasy football playoffs. And he's only rostered in about 6% of leagues. So if you're looking for a Taysom Hill replacement, maybe you don't have some of these better tight end options on the waiver wire like Hunter Henry, Tucker Craft, Jake Ferguson, those types of guys. This is definitely the next best guy, I think, in my opinion. And you could go pick him up and play him over the next couple of weeks if you need to. Now, the last and final player that I think you should be looking at this week on the waiver wire is going to be Chris Rodriguez Jr. for the Washington Commanders. Now, look, we said last week, go pick up Jeremy McNichols. That didn't really pan out. Rodriguez was the guy who ended up getting the majority of the carries behind Brian Robinson Jr. Now, Rodriguez is only rostered in about 2% of leagues. You see, he got 13 touches for 94 yards and a touchdown. It is worth noting, Chris Rodriguez is on bye this week. He is not going to be playing, so he may be flying under the radar. If you have no fab left, $0 bid might win this one. If you have low waiver wire priority, you might be able to sneak him onto the back end of your roster. And I look at that next matchup, week 15 in the fantasy football playoffs, he gets the New Orleans Saints. They're currently ranked 29th against the fantasy football running back position. Maybe Rodriguez is flexible in that week if you need some running back help. I'm not gonna say that I'm gonna burn the priority. I'm not gonna do really anything crazy to get Rodriguez on my team, but it is worth noting that he worked ahead of McNichols last week behind Brian Robinson, and he does have a good matchup in week 15. Just make sure you have him on your radar in case you need some running back help because he could be sneaking in the first round of the fantasy football playoffs. And now that we have my top 10 out of the way, like I said, I want to give you guys some running back stashes that you can put on the back end of your bench. These are high upside swings throughout the playoffs. Guys like Zach Charbonnet, Braylon Allen, Tajay Spears, Tyler Algier, Justice Hill, Roshan Johnson, Trey Benson, Kamani Vidal, Blake Corum, Ray Davis, Jaleel McLaughlin, Kenneth Gainwell, and Patrick Taylor. All of these guys are under 50% roster ship, so you should be able to get them onto your fantasy football teams in some of your leagues at least. And these are all high upside home run swings in case of injury. You might have some potential league winners here on this list. So make sure if these guys are available and you have the roster space on your bench, you go pick them up before the fantasy football playoffs start. So there you have it, folks. That is my top 10 waiver wire pickups as we head into week 14 of the fantasy football season. Like I said, the final week of the regular season is here. Hopefully we have clinched fantasy football playoffs. Hopefully we're going to be moving on into those playoffs and winning a fantasy football championship. If not, Hopefully you're able to clinch it this week. I appreciate each and every one of you for watching this video. If you liked what you heard, make sure you hit that like button for me. Make sure you're subscribed and make sure you go join that fantasy football discord that I have linked in the description. It is free to join that. There are 270 plus people in there that want to talk fantasy football with you. A dope community here at the League FFB. Maybe you can find some more dope friends to talk about fantasy football with in that community as well. And like I said, free to join. So there is no risk in doing that. With all that out of the way, I have nothing else for you today. So I will see you on our next episode. But until then, peace out.